Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this video titled Dot Plots and Data Distribution. And the goal for this video was for you to understand how you can summarize and display numeric data. I would like for you to turn your Go Math books to page 469, get out your math journals and a pencil. So the first thing we're going to take a look at on 469 is variable data and statistical questions. Now, the question you can see at the top of page 469 says, how much does a typical cat weigh? This is an example of a statistical question. Now, why is, a, why is it a statistical question? Because it's a question that has many different or variable answers. Okay, so we're going to take a look at some variable or not variable answers. And so you need to, un what this will help you understand is that when it's a variable answer, it would be considered a statistical question. If it's not variable answer, or there may not be many different answers, that means it's not a statistical question. So let's take a look at number one. Your sister wants to know the typical weight for an adult cat. Now, this would be considered a variable answer. Now, why is it variable? Because there could be many different answers to this. You may think about what type of cat are you talking about, um, how old may it be, and so on. So this would be a variable answer. So let's write that down. So this is just to help you think through what a statistical question actually is. You want to know how tall your friend is. Now, your, your friend is just talking about one friend, and your friend is not going to have a lot of different heights necessarily. It's going to have one height, so that would be um, not a variable question. So that's not a statistical question. Even though it deals with a number, it's not statistical because it doesn't have many different or variable answers. So we'll write that down. Not variable. Number three. You want to know how far your house is from school. Again, that is not variable. Your house is not going to move during the day or anything like that. So that's not variable. A car owner wants to know how much money people usually pay for a new tire. So that's variable. Why is that variable? Because it could depend on the size of the tire, the brand of the tire, and so on. And then finally... How many students were in line for lunch at the cafeteria today at 1230? So that is not variable because it would just be one possible answer that you would give. So let's write that down for number five. So now let's take a look at page 478 and it talks about making a dot plot. So we talked about statistical questions and a dot plot um, Statistical questions are answered by collecting and analyzing data. One way to understand a set of data is to make a visual display. So if we were trying to figure out, for example, um, how much people usually pay for a new tire, we may see you know, how much a tire usually costs and then see all the different types of prices and so on. And we could um, create a visual display like a dot plot to answer that question. So a dot plot is a visual display in which each piece of data is represented by, guess what? Yes, a dot above a number line. So a dot plot shows the frequency of each data value. So you can see at the bottom of page 470, we have a question. It says a different baseball team scores the following number of runs in its games for several weeks. So you can see all the different runs for each game. It says use the data to make a dot plot, tell how many games the team played, and identify the data value with the greatest frequency. So in order to record this data, first of all, we have this number line. We need to identify the different numbers here, and we're just going to do 0, 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 6, 8, and then 10 here. And then we can see it's just intervals of one, but we didn't write an interval or a number for each one. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our dot plot. So we have a four. Since we have a four, we put a dot above the four. I want you to do this with me. Another four, put a dot in above the four again. So we have six, and I do recommend checking them off so you don't get confused. 
We have one, two, another four, another one, two, five. So we have two threes here. So we'll do two dots for two threes. We have another five, another four, and a two. So you can see each number, the frequency of each number is represented by however many dots you have above each number on the number line. Now let's take a look at the questions that they're asking us. It says, tell how many games the team played. So what we can do is we can count the number of dots and we can see that there are 14 dots, which represents 14 games. And then it also says, and identify the data value with the greatest frequency. It says the value with the greatest frequency is four. So how do we know that? Because there are more dots above four than any other number. As simple as that. Four dots above four, that means there were four games where the team scored four runs. So what we have here is there were four games in which team the scored four um, runs. So only um, one game for six runs, for example, two games for one run. And we can see that just by the simply the number of dots above each number on the number line. So I want you to copy this answer down and put it right in page 470 there at the bottom. So now let's take a look at page 471. I want you to turn there on your Go Math book. Now it's talking about interpreting a dot plot. So again, a dot plot can give you a visual picture of the spread, center, and shape of data distribution. So it's another way to represent data. So you can describe the spread of a data set by identifying the least and greatest values. You can also look for outliers. Now outliers are data values that are either much greater or much less than the other data values. When you think about an outlier, think about the, a regular temperature, for example, in the month of February could be about 30 degrees, 35 degrees. An outlier for the month of Febu February would be a day where we have a 75 degree day. That would be an outlier. It's very unusual. Or we could even say in the month of February, maybe negative 20 degrees. That's very unusual for the month of February. So outliers are just kind of off the chart type um, numbers in a data set. So you can describe the center and shape of a data set in terms of peaks. When we think of a mountain peak, think about that clusters or symmetry. Now a symmetric distribution has approximately the same number of data values on either side of the center. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact, but roughly about the same number of data sets on either side. So let's take a look at these two different um, dot plots here right in front of us. Um, so letter A we can see a couple things that the data values are spread out from three to seven. There are not any outliers at all. In other words, everything is pretty much right together. So it talks about the data we can see does have a cluster from three to seven. Okay, and when we talk about a cluster, that's where most of the data is represented on the dot plot. Okay, that would be the cluster. The peak, which would mean the highest value there, there's a peak at 5, and it's also the center of the distribution. Now we can see that the distribution is symmetric. Okay, so remember when we talk about symmetric, you can see at the top, a symmetric dis distribution has approximately the same number of data values on either side of the center. So we can see that 5 is the center there. All right, and we have four total data sets um, there are data values on the left side, and we can see that there are five on the right side of the center, so that would be symmetric. It's not exact necessarily, but approximately has the same number of data values on either side of the center. Now let's take a look at letter B there. It says the data values are spread out from one to nine. So we can see this dot plot here. The data values are spread out from one to nine. The data value 1 appears to be an outlier. So if we're taking a look at this, it's an outlier. Why is that? Because it's not close to any other 
of the data values at all. So that would be considered an outlier there. So then it says the data has a cluster from six to nine. Okay, why is that? Because all the data is represented, I shouldn't say all the data, all the data except for the outlier is represented from six to nine. And you can also see within this dot plot that there is a peak at nine. All right, and then also with that, the greatest value in the data set is nine. All right, now thinking about whether the data is symmetrical or not. Um, so we can see that the distribution is not symmetric. Okay, Be and the reason for this is that the data values are clustered at one end of the distribution. So it's not spread out somewhat evenly like we can see for letter A. We can see the clusters are um, more towards the end of the distribution. So that would mean that it is not symmetric. So now let's take a look at question six on page 473. And what it says there, it says, find the mean, median, and range of the data from your turn question number four. That's the dot plot I have right there on the screen. What is the typical number of runs the team scores in a game? And also justify your answer. So if we're taking a look at a dot plot and we are trying to figure out the mean, for example, what we can do for this is we can set it up this way. So I can see I have two number ones here. So what I have to do is I take one and multiply it by two. I have three number twos. So I take two and multiply it by three. Two number threes. I take three, multiply it by two. Four number fours, I take four, multiply it by four. Then I add this to, I have number five, I'm going to multiply it by two. And then I have number six, I'm going to multiply it by one. Okay, so it's another way of just taking all the numbers and adding them together first of all. So this is a way to add all the numbers without writing every single number out and adding them together. So what we'll do here is we take 1 times 2, it's going to give me 2. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 2 is 6. 4 times 4 is 16. We have 5 times 2 is 10. And also 6 times 1 is 6. So we're going to add all these numbers together. And that's going to give us 46. Now, what do we divide it by? We divide it by however many dots we have here. And there are 14 total dots, so we take 46 divided by 14, and that's going to give me 3.2857 and so on. So we're going to round that just to 3.3 .3 for the mean. Now we are going to take a look at finding the median when we have a dot plot. Now what you could do when you have a median is just write the total numbers out. So in other words, I have two number two, number one, so I'll write one and one, and then two and two, three times, and so on. Um, however, if you take a look at a dot plot, we can see that there are 14 dots here. And when we're looking at the number 14, the number seven and eight, the seven and eight numbers that occur, number seven and eight, I should say, will be the median. Okay, so counting these numbers, we can see we have one, two, and when you count them, you have to start at the bottom and go up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the seventh number is the number three, which would mean the eighth number, which would be down here, would be four. Okay, so this is the median. Remember, median, you add the two digits together. If you have two, fall in the middle, and then divide by two. So that's going to give us 3.5 for the median. Now, if we're taking a look at the range, what we can see is the first number that we have in our data set is a 1. 
and the final number that we have in our data set is a 6. So we just take the difference between the 1 and 6, and that is going to give us 5 for the range. And now the question is asking, what is the typical number of runs the team scores in a game? So we could see the typical number of runs the team scores is between 3 and 4 runs. Now why do we know that? We can see we have 3 there, and then the number 3, we have 2. Um, sets for three, and then one, two, three, four sets of four. So six out of the 14 sets are scored in anywhere between three and four runs. How can we justify this? We know the mean and the median are close in value. So the mean is three, median is 3.5. Okay, so that's anywhere between three and four runs there. Um, and we can also see that there are not any outliers at all. In other words, there's not a um, dot on our dot plot that is all the way over here at the 11 necessarily. That would be considered an outlier. Okay, but we don't have anything like that. So we can see that the typical number of runs scored is between three and four runs. So this concludes the video on the topic of dot plots and data distribution. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.